Hi everybody and welcome back to this series on getting more out of ChemSketch. I'm Jesse and I'm a marketing guy here at ACD Labs and I'm excited to talk to you today about naming actually. Uh, using ChemSketch to name, uh, ACD Labs takes our chemical naming actually quite seriously. We have some very powerful uh, software to help with chemistry naming, um, but you can get access to a lot of that within the uh, ChemSketch software. So I'm going to be running through some of that and giving you an introduction to what the software can do and how to get the most out of it. So topics covered today, I'm going to be talking about converting from structure into a name and then also going from name into a structure um, and like the different ways that you can do that. Um, I'm also going to kind of show you some of the um, properties there of uh, how you can adjust your settings slightly when you're doing those sorts of conversions. I'm also going to be showing you how to get the uh, inchy and smiles notation out of it, which is another type of naming that is more computer friendly than it is human friendly, but it's uh, still handy. To to have access to. Beyond that, I'm going to show you a tool that we have for understanding how we arrive at a specific uh, name within uh, the program, and then also using our dictionary tool, which is useful for drawing uh, compounds really quickly from a, a given name or using them as a template. And then um, I'm also going to be showing you the calculate functions, which is kind of really related because uh, I see like you know the names is calculated from the structure and the structure is calculated from the name. So I'm going to be talking about calculation about things like um, the formula, chemical formulas, chemical weights, and there's other things that you can do that I actually think are surprisingly neat that many people don't uh, know that's in there. So stick around for that if you want to see some uh, really cool extra functionality that uh, you can get out of the program. Now, a couple of small things to mention before I get into the actual video. The first is that there will be a couple of the functions that I'm showing here today that may not be available in the freeware version of the software. Uh, there is a freeware version that's available for students and academics, and you can do most of the things that I'm showing you today using that, but there might be a few moments that you can't follow along, and if you really want to have access to those features, you should look into upgrading to the fullware version or to ACD name is another alternative. And I'll have some links in the description for you to check out if you want to learn more about those. Second, I would love to have your comments as to what else to cover in this uh, series. Um, of course, you know, like and subscribe to uh, support the, the series, but particularly your comments will help me know what you want to see next and what questions you have that I should cover in these kinds of videos. So please share those. I would really appreciate it. Um, but that's everything. Let's get sketching. Okay, let's get started with doing something kind of simple here. We are going to draw a little structure. Uh, this one right here will work. Not the sort of thing that I know what the name is off the top of my head, um, but uh, we can just click this button right here, generate name for structure, and it'll pop up right underneath our structure. Easy peasy. So that's one way that you can do it, this button here. Uh, alternatively, if you prefer, you can go under the tools function, generate name for structure right here. Does the exact same thing. Now, because this is the only structure on the page, it'll pull up automatically, even if I don't have the structure highlighted. Um, if I have multiple structures highlighted, it will do something that um, might not be what you want what we are going to do name from structure again it assumes that this is actually a mixture between the two of a one-to-one -one mixture so that's what this nomenclature means um often that's not what you want so instead you can just do something like this you highlight it you press the button you get your name right here so um pretty easy to do of course now, alternatively uh what if you have the name but not the structure uh well fear not we have this button right here, generate structure for name. Press that, this pops out. Uh, it does come up with the automatic um, uh, atom numbering. Um, people don't always want to have that there, so you can just remove that by pressing this little button here of the show hide uh, atom numbers. Um, so turn that on, turn that off, whatever you like, but we're going to keep it off for right now. Uh, this. Once again, we have multiple ways that we can pull off this exact same feat that we can go under here, structure from name under generate in the tools menu, and we get the same thing out once again. Now, there are some settings that you can use to adjust the ways in which your names are 
uh, processed here. Um, the um, have a little button right here, name for structure options. So let's open that here. And um, you're going to get a few different uh, changes that you can uh, adjust here, depending on what your preferences are, uh, maybe where you're um, publishing, um, or who you're publishing for, um, you can put the low cants position in the uh inside the terms or outside the terms um you can use the names such as like toluene that you pull out that it pulls this um you know certain replacement names as opposed to something like methyl benzene which is technically um you know more accurate in some people's eyes you can uh, use some older terminology if that's something that you want to to do um in the uh, different options here. Uh, one of the uh, examples that is particularly important uh, for some situations is um, biochemical names. Uh, one of the strengths actually of ChemSketch as a naming um, system or ACD na name, which is what, what does the, the naming within um, uh, ChemSketch, is actually our ability to name uh, steroids uh, using uh, steroid based uh, nomenclature. So I'll show you kind of how that works here. So I'm going to keep this, um, I'm going to turn this off for right now. Uh, and I'm just going to pull up this structure that I had um, placed here earlier. Um, obviously, not a structure that I know the name of off the top of my head. Uh, but you can see that it's a steroid if you if you uh, recognize that it's um, it is a steroid structure. So we can press this button right here. And holy moly, we get this name, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. But it's a pretty uh, involved, um, complicated name, as you would expect for a complicated molecule. But uh, this is on, under the circumstances where we have turned off our um, language, our uh, biochemical names here. So let us try this again with the biochemical names enabled. Oh, five beta, uh, cola stan three beta all. Um, so not the easiest name to pronounce, but it's a lot easier to process than the previous one. So this is one of the advantages that you have here is that you can name um, things like steroids uh, quite effectively. And you can turn that on or off depending on what the situation is and what your preferences are in uh, where you're uh, writing. Oh, yeah, I think that that is all of the uh, steroids that we need for this uh, video for right now, at least we can pull back to our little molecule up here that I uh, promised you. So that some inchi and some smiles. So let's go first for the inchi. Um, this is the nomenclature for inchi, as I explained, it was not the um, most uh, human friendly uh, nomenclature, but it does work and it is helpful to have access to. And then alternatively, you can use the smiles notation here. So the, these are ones that you can use within a computer. The computers will understand it quite easily, and they're they're used in certain databases as well. Um, but they are, um, yeah, they, they, they you can produce those here. Now, in case you were wondering, you can of course take these and then generate structures based on them. Um, that that's with the smiles. Let's do it with Inchi now. Um, let's take this and produce a structure from that. Aha, see, easy peasy. So you can do it with uh, with these uh, smiles codes and, and inches uh, for given structures in addition. So as I mentioned, there are some advanced functionality that you can do with uh, either chem sketch uh, full version or with ACD name. Um, so I'll show you one of the things that you can do here is that there's this button here to switch over to uh, IUPAC naming mode where we take our structure and then we throw this into the IUPAC naming and we actually can pull up the um, the rules that are being used to arrive at the name that we we have here. And one of the other advantages too is that we can see where the the naming nomenclature also is applies in a given molecule. Obviously with a molecule of this size, that's not that hard to, to, to do or not, not as, as powerful, but you can imagine as um, molecules get much larger to, to find where the different groups are being uh, applied and how, how they, they fit together um, is quite useful. So we can also open up some of these options as well if you want to learn more about how the naming has been applied. 
So I did mention that we were going to take a look at the dictionary. The dictionary can be found up here, ACD slash dictionary. Um, open this up and we have a database of almost 170,000 compounds uh, using different names here. And you can see all sorts of them. This is the uh, steroid that I pulled up earlier um, based on uh, this name. You can also see that there's some of them that are using um, different kinds of names. So there, there's some of them that have cast numbers that are associated with them if you want to look those up. So this is uh, very useful, particularly for those um, non-systematic names. So like Karzim here, um, it, it is not a systematic name, of course. Um, I didn't know what Karzim was before I opened this up, but we can um, pull this out and uh, then use it. Press OK. Great, we have this to, to work off now, and we can um, uh, copy it, paste it, etc. But um, but yeah, that that is a, a very useful function to have access to if you are in looking for the non systematic names, or if you have a non systematic name that you want to pull out. Um, but then you also can look up your drawn structures in the dictionary. So I'm going to click this here based on the Karzim, and we pull up this. This is the more systematic name. This is the Aniupac uh, recommended name um, based on it. So we have access to that as well um, if we wanted to go through things that way. Or of course, we could just do what we had been doing before, which was pulling the names from our little button. So that's where we get this one. But um, I should also mention that we can pull out our names from the uh, the, the naming system using the uh, non-systematic name. So I pulled out that Karzim. I have not seen this compound before uh, in my life, but uh, let's pull this out here and we can recreate it once again through through this and put it in. We don't have to do it through the dictionary if for whatever reason it's not showing up in the dictionary, we can try it through this mechanism as well. And it just means less button pressing. So that shows you a little bit about how some of these um, functions work in the dictionary and the, the usages of that. So it's, re it's really handy to do, especially if you're in more exotic compounds. And there's a lot of pharmaceutical compounds that are in there as well that are useful. If you want to pull those up, take a look at them, and then um, uh, check their different naming uh, properties. Finally, I want to show you the uh, calculate functions um because i think that those are really cool and that maybe some people don't realize that they're they're in there and we're where they are that you can uh find them um because as i, I mentioned in the introduction i feel like um naming and calculation are in some respects you know related because you're just taking the the structure and pulling it from that uh so let's take this here and i will show you them they are under the tools menu we have calculate and we have a bunch of um different options here but let's start with molecular formula. So the molecular formula for this compound is C9H10O. We can copy the editor and it places it right here. So now we have access to our chemical formula. Uh, handy to have, especially for you know, more complicated uh, chemicals than this. This is obviously one that you could count pretty easily by yourself, but our carazine that we were looking at earlier, um, not as simple to put together. Um, also, we have the um, molecular weight as well we can do that from for formula weight copy the editor get that here little little formula weight um uh here that is uh based on the structure easy peasy but where things get really cool in my opinion is with the tools calculate we can um also first do all properties so there's a whole list here that are beyond just the formula weight and the um formula the molecular formula um but we have a bunch of here you know densities and polarization nominal masses there's a bunch of things here for uh mass spec related um calculations that might be useful uh so let's do all properties great okay um so that is a lot here and we get them all into a nice table we can copy these uh, as well, and we can drop them into an Excel document as well. So all of that, I just copied it and pasted it here. We have a whole whack of information here, which is very useful to have for particular applications that you can, don't need to calculate these things out individually. Not only that, 
um, we have a little uh, cute little function right here. You see this, uh, the, the chain here, what that actually means is that it's tied to the structure as of right now. So we can do things like the following and you see all these numbers change because we add another carbon. We do it again, add another carbon and we have the formula changes, the formula weight changes, uh, everything updates to uh, align with the, the new structure. So this is a really handy way and then you could just, you know, go by these you know one by one you know copy it paste it, it like let's say that you want to uh get a bunch of properties for a whole um you know library of compounds that are related this is a way that you can do it that you can just uh, change the um structure slightly and then update your um spreadsheet with each individual one so that's um a, a really uh fancy output uh, mode that you have that i think a lot of people aren't aware that you can that you can use so the last thing that I want to show you for this particular one is the, the properties that you can use in that um, generate uh, the calculate outputs rather. Um, so calculate here. We can also select properties to calculate. So right here we open this little um, tool up. Let's say that we don't want all of these mass spec related um numbers the, those aren't really relevant to us right here so let's take this okay and now we have that selected so we go back into tools calculate selected properties and then copy to editor so now all of those have been have been lost and we have the rest of them here and of course you can change them back too so you have a, a all that control so it's a really useful tool to have access to for a variety of different applications when you want to learn more about your molecules and it's all right just here in your drawing package so that's very convenient I thought so that should cover everything hopefully I have addressed all of your naming needs uh, if you have any questions though about this or any other topic be sure to check out the comment section write something in there I'll get back to you if you have any specific questions or I might even make videos around it so uh, that, that'd be lovely though to get your uh, interaction on that front but that'll be it from me today happy sketching